Welcome back to 360 Sports today on this Thursday, February 22nd. It is a frenzy show here on the show. We're talking all things sports today here with Sophia, Ben, and Cora. How are we doing today, guys? Doing great, man. Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of sports we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to start with Penn State men's basketball, who returned to Rec Hall last night in a big upset win over number 12, Illinois. It was a big win by one point. Uh, it was a really hype game. I know, Ben, you were at the game. How it hype was. was it? Oh, it was incredible, man. Like, when, whenever, like, he drained those free throws at the end, like, it was just, like, crazy. And then when he missed, like, as, like I knew, we, we all knew he missed. Everyone stormed out onto the court. I got trampled a lot. And I saw, <laughs> I saw a lot, of, saw a lot of videos of that, yeah. I saw a lot, of, a lot of other people get trampled as well. But it was a great, it was a great moment. Definitely a memory I'll have forever. Um, but, like, that comeback was electric. Like, th we were down, like, seven points in, like, with like 30 seconds left, like yeah. wow. crazy. Nice. And then we were down like 10 with like two minutes left. Like it, it was a great win, Gr great team win. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think? What do you guys think about Those that? are, these are games where I wish we were a basketball school mm -hmm. because I would have yeah. went, like I didn't really know much to go to like yeah. Illinois and Penn State. I, I didn't think, one, I kind of didn't think we were going to win. Because even <laughs> though we've had a couple upsets though this season, yeah. so really it's like not that surprising. It seemed like we're like, we're like the upset like team. Like yeah. if you come yeah. and you think that you're just gonna like come through Penn State and you're gonna walk out with a win and stay ranked, like that doesn't always happen when you come here and play our men's basketball team. So that's impressive. I just wish it was more consistent. Yeah. So then when we play those smaller school, when Penn State plays those smaller schools, it's like it's a it's, it's gonna be an automatic win. But it's not like that anymore. So that's why I understand though why games like these are so big and like being in Rec Hall. Like I can, I can understand how electric yeah, that must oh, have yeah. been. Yeah. Like bringing it back, the spirit in that hall is so much different than playing at the BJC. So much like this, I honestly think that adds to the victory. Like how Penn State got got that one more point. Like just mm -hmm. being in the atmosphere, like that plays a huge part in it. So like I'm so glad for that. But yeah, I'm gonna have to catch more of these bigger games. They need to play in Rec Hall more. This was electric. I noticed the more electric games are when like nobody goes or like nobody like it's changed somehow. Yeah. Because I what was it versus Wisconsin, Wisconsin. or like they did a big yeah. Versus Wisconsin, yeah nobody like really went because it was a snow day and then like now it's like Rec Hall and that was like completely packed so like yeah. it can only be like a certain amount of like people. That's that's when they win. Yeah. That's when yeah. they have that electric win and. I, I need to go to like go to the yeah, Red, Red Red calls electric. All it's the time. different also in being on the team and then looking into the stands and seeing it's literally packed out, like sold mm -hmm. out, like you have to like actually try to fight to get in. Like that makes you more inclined to play well. I feel like when Penn State plays the BJC, they look there's so many empty seats and maybe not because there's not enough fans, just because I we're just not a big enough basketball school to be able to fill the BJC, I feel like, every single match. So yeah, it's yeah. it's just more it's more condensed. Like the, the, it's exactly. louder in there, everyone's closer together. Like it doesn't look like like the at the BJC it's like so many like you said, so many empty seats. It's like, you know, like but yeah. when when it's like in a smaller gym, it reminded me of like my, my high school. Cause like it was like really small and like it was yeah. always packed there. Yeah, it's just like that whole like exactly like high school like that homeschool spirit. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah, so like that's the why I'm. North Stadium feel like whenever you look at yeah. like Duke or North Carolina or a lot of the ACC teams, they play in these arenas where the fans are engaging with the players yeah. on yes. the court. At the BJC, they're just sort of sitting back, yeah, and yeah we, watching the game. So it's yeah. not as electric as Rec yeah. Hall. But uh, also tonight, Penn State women's basketball returns to Rec Hall after the men's team went last night, and they will be playing number two ranked. Ohio State. Penn State has struggled as of late, losing, I believe, five in a row, five games in a row. So, yeah. Cora, what are your thoughts about this game coming up? We're not going to win. I, I'm sorry. I love women's basketball here at Penn State. That We're not going to win. It's going to be it's going to be a losing streak of six after this game. There's there's no way. See, I'm I, I, so upset by yeah, Oh, okay. I'm yeah. so upset by that because we Penn State only lost to them in the beginning by 10. It was like 94 to 84. Like, really great game and that's something that if Penn State could have kept it up throughout the season I honestly think um, we, we we could see a win tonight and an upset because the women's basketball team is another team where they can snag those upsets out of like those ranked teams but because of our five game losing streak and I'm just looking at Ohio State streak right now they're on a winning streak yeah, like they're, they're, yeah. they're doing they very well right now so it's not in the cards for Penn State tonight, but I think if it was the beginning of the season, it would have been. Well, yeah. the, the, what the Lady Lions need to do, they need to really cut down on their turnovers because the, against Illinois, 17 turnovers, and whenever, whenever uh, what is it, 
like 17 turnovers against Illinois, 26 turnovers against um, what is it or against Maryland. Like they need to cut down on that. But my thing is like Penn State, Penn State men's basketball, they can win against number 12 Illinois. Odds stacked against them. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why I can see. The, I can't see the Lady Lions upset in here. But it would it's, take a lot. It's it, gonna be hard. It would take a lot for Penn State to come out with the upset for this one, just because coming out. I just know being like a prior athlete, like anyone knows, coming out of a five-game losing streak is tough. But maybe mm. Ohio State's gonna roll in here and think, all right, we're just gonna steamroll this team. We'll get in and out, and like I think it'd be a big difference, though. Hopefully, maybe again, maybe the atmosphere of Rec Hall could make this like game a big upset. I would love to see that come in on my phone from yeah. like the SAS, the updates. I would <laughs> yeah. love to see that come in on my phone. Like don't get me wrong, I'm rooting for Penn State, yeah. but yeah. realistically. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Like I mean I don't know how many people are gonna be here compared to the men's game. But like I don't know. A lot of people were I wanted yeah. to go. Yeah, you but. might have a lot of people there. Just yeah. because yeah. Yeah. it's a big game you're playing it's number rack. two ranked Ohio State. Yeah. Like they're the second best team in yeah. country behind Iowa who has Caitlin Clark. So yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 this is, this will be a big game I think for overall so yeah. okay so now we're going to go to baseball here for our next segment spring training started today dodgers versus padres dodgers were up 14-1 last time i yep. checked i mean they're, they're the juggernauts so what do you guys think uh your early world series predictions ben i'll start with you what are your what is your early world series well, prediction? for me well, i have these guys on the screen here and that's yeah. because of that man right there shohei oh, yeah. otani like he's obviously not going to be pitching a lot this year but we're definitely going to have to we're definitely going to have to see how he how he does with just strictly DHing. Um, but yeah, the, as for the National League, I'll definitely take the Dodgers. Um, for the for AL, I, I definitely see the Orioles or the Yankees because the Orioles obviously, like they, they they got eliminated last year, first round, young team. They're they're looking to turn it around here. Um, coming into this year, they all got the playoff experience. They're going to be looking to bounce back. I also could see the Yankees really really making it so that, like, because they they recently acquired Juan Soto. And with Juan Soto being in that being in that lineup, like hitting third, second in the order, I could definitely see that. But yeah, no, definitely I could definitely see the Dodgers, Dodgers making it with Shohei. But despite the pitching, like pitching up is always always good in is always good in LA. T Tony Tony Gonsolin will be back. Clayton Kershaw is coming back. Um, but yeah, that I could definitely see these two down the line. But let, it's spring training, you know, like you never know injuries happen, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that's my take. You know, I completely agree. I believe the Dodgers will be eventually in there, but I'm going to look directly at the camera. And all I'm going to say is Phillies, Red October. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. That's what I'm saying. That's we'll what I'm see. saying. You think? Phillies? I mean, the, with the Phillies, I could see that. Uh, with the Phil, I don't even know. Like the, the Phillies, like, they, 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 they shocked the world against the, they shocked the world against the, the Braves. But, yeah, no. The Phillies, I could see for sure. You think so? Yeah. Mm, I'm not. I'm thinking Yankees, honestly, this yep. year for this year. I'm thinking the Yankees and the Orioles. Mm. The the Yankees have Juan Soto, so obviously that's gonna be perfect for them. And I don't don't quote me on this, but I do. I know that um, B Blake Snell. If the Yankees could acquire him, then that would be like really turning point for them. I I know that there's talk that that he's out of reach or he's not coming in. It's like it changes throughout the, throughout the days. Like he was like trolling them, saying that he was yeah. going to yeah. yeah. come yeah. in or and then he's like a free agent. So I know that's so up in the air, but I know he would be really dangerous for them. And then, like you said, the, Oreo, the Orioles, they're a young team. So mm -hmm. they would be really dangerous. But I'm in between those two, the Yankees, the Dodgers, and the Orioles. I would love to see someone other than the Phillies. <laughs> I, I as just, a Mets I, fan, I I'm, just want to say I'm not personally a Phillies fan. I just wanted to say that because Nick Volpe made me say that, and I'm personally not going to be. You know, I'm just gonna say that he made me. He forced me to say it. If five or not even like 30 minutes before the show, he came up and he said he like he specifically said he was like if you say that it'll be so funny. So I'm like I'm gonna say it for a comedic effect, and it's not just me specifically. I am not a Phillies fan. I mean, I love Philadelphia. It's great. I love it. But not a great Phillies fan. Just saying that. I am not a Phillies fan the slightest. So <laughs> I hope that the Eagles yeah. aren't in a single championship game. I hope that the Phillies wow. don't make a single championship game. So that's my take. And also, the that's Orioles right. added Corbin Burns. So that is huge. That's so that is really huge to their, to their roster. I don't think it's going to be the same teams as it always is. Like, you know, like the Astros, the Padres. They get... I, yeah. 
I don't know. I think this year is going to be different. It's, been, it's so early, so obviously these are like way too early also, picks. Also, yeah, I agree yeah. with you on this one, Ben. I mean, I think the Dodgers are going to go back to the World Series. I mean, they haven't been there in four years already. It seems yeah. like it was just like yesterday they were like there, but they, they have a dynasty now. They have a true yeah. bona fide dynasty with Yamamoto, with Otani. They have a lineup that can just hit yeah. consistently. Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts. I mean, they just have top to bottom, just like one of the best lineups in all of baseball. So yeah, no, yeah, no, good. Yeah, no, that would be that would be impressive. And I yeah. honestly, and I think they deserve it because every year they get close. I feel like yeah. they do. So yeah, they do. it would be nice to see them. Yeah, yeah. but with the Orioles too, like you also got to realize, like th they still have prospects in the minor leagues. As Jackson you see Holiday. Jackson Holiday, he's really yeah. good. number one overall really prospect good. in baseball. He's going to be coming up. He's definitely going to make a huge impact for them. So. Orioles are definitely a strong case for me, they despite are. how young they are. They All right, so let's go to our next segment then, Ben. As we both are Pirates fans here, yeah. no offense to the Mets fan here <laughs> on the set, but, but, but uh, he just signed a five-year contract extension today with the Pirates. Yeah. Uh, he was really good last year, made his first All-Star game. How, do you, how good do you think the Pirates can be with their new ace locked in for five years? Well, this was a great, it was a great start to my day. I woke up and oh, I yeah. saw this on my phone, and I'm like, <laughs> Heck yeah. yeah. Uh, I love to see it. Yeah. Yeah. This, is yeah, this book got me out of bed in the morning. jury February day. Yeah. This, is I mean, what, like, this is what the motivation Obviously, is. not a lot of people talk about the Pirates enough. I'm, I'm not going to be biased here. We're not, we're not World Series contenders. No. We're, we're long shots. But the thing is, th this team is young. This team is just like the Orioles. They have a young, they have a young core. They got, they, got, they got a really good bullpen. Like On paper, it looks like one of the better bullpens in baseball, top ten. Uh, for the starting rotation, he's definitely going to be leading the way. Yeah, you We're got definitely going to be seeing Paul Skeens coming up, hopefully, hopefully this year hopefully in like the soon. summertime. Um, but as far as like, like you got Brian Reynolds, corner like cornerstone, keep Brian Hayes, cornerstone. I mean, you got you got power hitters in Sawinski and uh, and Rowdy Telez. Nice yeah, pickup there. Rowdy Telez we'll see how he's going to be this year. Uh, but middle of the infield, you got O'Neill Cruz coming back as well. That's another power hitter uh, to mention. Same with uh, Leo Verpaguero. He's a great guy to have yeah, in the middle of the field. A lot assets. of good, good contact guy. But yeah, no, we're just looking good all, all the way around. And I, I could see us making a lot of progress this year, especially compared to last year. Because we, we, we were red hot last year. we got to see T. Brian Hayes continuing his power surge like he was last year. But, yeah, no, Mitch Keller, big, big signing right there. O'Neill Cruz is hopefully next. But this is, a, this is a great signing by Pittsburgh. And Ben Charrington, he's doing a great job with this team for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're just they they're a really good team right now on paper. The way they've been yeah. progressing through the years, they had their most wins in a season in like four years, yeah. five years this past year. But I mean, I mean, it really comes down, in my opinion, to Shel Derek Shelton, the manager. I mean, you know this, Ben. Like he's been here since the rebuild. Yeah, he's, he's been here for all the bad years. So this is really his year to be yeah. like, can you lead this team to yeah. like the next level, or can you not? Yeah, so well, I think that's a big thing. But again, Mitch Keller, huge signing. If he can play better. In the second half of the season, he was really bad at the end of last season. Yeah. So if he can continue yeah. to get better, that'll be good for the Pirates. But yeah, overall, yeah, I think as, this is a great signing. As you said about as you said about Derek Shelton, like he he's been through it all. He's been through he the downloads, like obviously the hundred loss years. Like it's it's tough. Like it's tough yeah. being it's tough being in a situation. It's tough being a rebuild. Pirates fan. It makes you look real bad. But yeah. he he he's, he brings a positive energy to, to the to the locker room. Um, he he actually recently congratulated Mitch Keller on being the opening day starter. Yeah. But, but yeah, no, he, he's a great guy. He, he was an all-star coach last year somehow. I don't know how, but, you know, <laughs> he made it. But, we're, but like, like, like I said, like, it's, it's going to be a good year for us. Like, we're, we're slowly getting better each and every year. Um, but, yeah, 76 and 86 last year, I think it was. I think it was, yeah. But, so yeah, I, I'm, expecting, I'm expecting, like, 500, maybe a little bit above 500, maybe a little bit below. Teetering yeah. around that area. Yeah, hopefully somewhere around there. Yeah. I think all the Pirates needs, need is that shove of a really strong pitcher. He's young. He's got a lot going for him. Yeah. I know the end of the season wasn't great last year, but a lot could happen in an off season. A lot could happen yeah. when a lot when the so much pressure is riding on you. Because mm -hmm. last year the Pirates they were seeking in some upsets. They were getting some wins against good teams. Like they didn't show out all the time, but yeah. they were your definition, I think, of a like mediocre team with so much potential. Yeah. That's what they are, yeah. That's what they are. That's exactly, exactly right what the Pirates are. So I think this five-year extension is going to be great for them. If it doesn't work out, that really sinks. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. I think become, being so young and getting that five-year extension, too, like means a lot to a person to like yeah. have mo motivation. Like these older players who are like legendary and mm -hmm. then like get these extensions, like they have, year, they have years to like get better and like – burn themselves out, but yeah. I don't think that's going to happen with this yeah, I mean, pitcher. M Mitch Keller struggled towards the end of that year, which was a, towards the end of last year, which was like a little bit like concerning for sure, but um, he, he he's proven that his ability, he, he's, he's worked hard, he's yeah. 
he's really gotten better in the off season. But yeah, I I really like the signing. Yeah, this is this is going to be good. good I like going how forward. the Pirates are finally starting to spend money. Yeah, so we'll so. see how this goes for the Pirates moving forward. So now we're going to go to our next segment, which is a board segment, guys. It's your best champions ever, player, team. You could even probably put in a Anything. coach. I'm not even sure, but <laughs> you can do whatever criteria you want. So okay. I believe, Sophia, you're up yes, first. Yes, I will first. Go All right, so Sophia's champion here. All right. Let's see. So mine was. This I did the Tampa Bay winning the Super Bowl in 2021 against the Chiefs, and I'm in the Super Bowl spirit still. It was only uh, two two weeks ago, a week ago, so I was still thinking about. I am a Tom Brady lover. I think he obviously is the goat. I don't take all. I don't listen to any hate allegations against him. So I wanted to take a time where he took a team that wasn't really like big, wasn't really, like they were known, but they weren't doing much in like the postseason and the playoff. Um, season, and he took them to the Super Bowl and then won the Super Bowl. I think that is just obviously all not credit to him and Gronk, especially. But this was just a really big, I was rooting for them, and, I, and I'm a Chiefs fan, and I do really like them. So I was rooting, for, but I was still rooting for Tampa Bay this Super Bowl. And this this year when the Super Bowl came around, I was like thinking about like past games that I liked and past even like halftime shows that I liked. I just remember this being like this was like still on the forefront of my mind. So, yep, that's why I picked the best championship ever for this one. Yeah, that's a good yeah. pick. Yeah. I mean, I think for Tom Brady, I think he's just like a really just like synonymous guy with yeah. the word champion. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's just won wherever he's been. So, yeah, that's a good pick. So now we have Ben's champion here. Yeah. Well, here's my champion. Um, I, I picked the uh, 2017 Pittsburgh Penguins. This was when they went back to back. Uh, it was a great, it was, it's, it's all like the, the, the first thing that came to mind when trying to figure out which was my favorite was definitely the nostalgia. I remember always coming home from baseball practices and like, like watching them like on prime time. Uh, it was, it was just a magical world, world series. It was a magical, it was a magical playoff run. Um, definitely my, my favorite moment was in double OT when Chris Coons shot that. Chris Kunitz, he like, and then Craig Anderson just like froze like this. It was just, it was beautiful. And then, and then it was that one game against the Nashville Predators where Patrick Hornquist scored that late game goal. I know just, you know, you probably remember that. Yeah, I was up late too. And then I'm like, I'm like falling asleep. And then I wake, and then I'm like woken up by like a Patrick Hornquist goal. Uh, it, it was just it, all around it was such a great run. We beat the Capitals as well. I hate the Capitals. Uh, Ottawa Senators, that was, that was the start of the Ottawa. We, we, we destroyed in that. We destroyed franchises in this. Like the Nashville Predators, they're still all right. Um, Penguins are obviously on the downfall, so I'm going to be living living through this. This is how I'm going to get through the Penguins probably not being very good for a good a good while. Yeah, well, like the Penguins getting through the memories. Yeah. Like, like we remember like the Stanley Cup run, and then it's yeah. like now we're just like in the dark ages. Yeah, you, so. yeah it's starting yeah. to get there. It's, it's slowly turning. We're slowly getting older. So. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good pick. I like that pick. Yeah. All right, Corey, your champion. Cool. Okay, so you guys remember how I said that I love Philly, but... I do not like the Phillies. Well, I don't like the Phillies. I'm a little bit about them. But here we go. 27, 2017 season, Eagles winning the Super Bowl. I am a huge Eagles fan, and it, it gives nostalgia. I remember I was, like, playing Wii Sports today with my roommate in Below East, and um, we, I was just thinking about, like, nostalgia today, and I had to submit this photo, and there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's uh, it's just... It's heartwarming. It actually. It was such a good game. Okay, I I was like worried that you guys would like oh, no. just hate it. <laughs> I'm gonna be so uh, honest. I, I was like. That's a good pick. I was rooting for the Eagles when it came. Yeah, no, I was. Oh. Like, I'm only a recent Eagles yeah. hater, not the 2017 <laughs> Eagles. Okay, but well, that's like fair though. Only, that's I don't fair. Them recently. Okay, but anyway, this is my. So pick. this is good. I yeah. Feel, good job. I just feel for Carson Wentz during that time. He he was. Yeah. You could feel him. bad for him, but I mean, at the same time, I, Nick Foles made his legacy Nick from Foles, that game. So yeah. I mean, yeah, if you're gonna. I'm completely fine. I'm, I'll completely take that. Yeah. For sure. All right, so now we're gonna go to my. I don't have a team. You three pick teams, you know, and, and players, but I have a player specifically for this uh, pick right here, and it is Mario Lemieux. Now, there's two sides of this story here for Mario Lemieux. There is the player who obviously is a Hall of Fame player. Two-time Stanley Cup champion, won two or three Hart Ross trophies, which is the MVP in hockey. And he also came back from cancer twice while he was playing hockey. So that is also really important to know here. But also as the owner, he saved the team from bankruptcy in 1999, which is like really important because they were going to move to Kansas City. I'm, I'm sure Ben knows that. They, they were just going to be gone. So 
him saving the team was huge. So now technically, if you think about it, he's a five-time Stanley Cup champion because of his three Stanley Cup champions as an owner. So basically, the way, uh, the way he's like played as a player and the way he led as an owner is just like so improbable. I mean, he, he's definitely top two all time. I know my friend Austin thinks he's number one all time, but Austin, you're wrong. It is Ma Wayne Gretzky and then it is Mario Lemieux. But overall, I mean, Mario Lemieux is just an incredible player, an incredible face for the Penguins. He, he was the first great face of hockey for the Pittsburgh Penguins, saving them uh, from the dark years they had in the 1980s, and he's been the saving face since. So, yeah, yeah I mean, he's, he's incredible. I'm by your pick. Yeah, you uh, no, I mean, he's an incredible player, and I think just yeah, no. overall, yeah, he just saved the yeah, no, I, I think definitely that is a championship that deserves to yeah. be. Yep. Notice. Penguins are are definitely a successful franchise, but I can I can sense that we're heading down a dark. No, hole. we are. Yeah, Penguins we are. are now heading down. Everyone's getting old. Malkin's like 37. Gensel's yeah. probably not going to be here for much longer. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah, problems in the Penguins. Yeah, you guys need a like, clean house. Yeah, it, it's time. Um, I don't we think should have done that how, years ago. That's no, also a, no, yeah, a struggle. But need a clean I mean, house. once once Kyle Dubas figures out how to clean house, yeah. that'll. Pe Penguins, yeah, they 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 should have done it years ago. Like yeah, like they, I mean, it starts with this guy right here. Yeah. I know, cleaning house. Too late. So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's All right, so now let's move on to college football, our next segment here. There's been a lot going on these last couple of days. The college football playoff committee approved a 12 team playoff format. They're still talking about 14 teams. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the following seasons. But what do you guys think about this? And what do you guys think about Penn State? Will they finally make the playoff? Well, I think Penn State will. I think they will. No. You're shaking your head. No. I think that have this you, is. Have you seen Penn State's schedule? I have seen the schedule. <laughs> There's at least four losses. At least four. Man, four. You, you, I think you really little, don't I think like Penn State. I think that's and a little I'm rough. looking, I'm that's looking, I think that's I'm looking at the Penn State's travel to whatever they're going to get, and I don't see it. I don't see it. Penn really, State. I do. And and I, the I, reason I do is because now that it's 12, now exactly. that it's a 12 it's team, 12 like, that's opportunity, why I see it. Yeah. you're going to, because Penn State, I feel like each season doesn't go in thinking, oh, we're going to go to the college football play. Like, they probably the mindset they should have. That probably is what they have, but they just don't. They need to know they have to be like, perfect. Okay, but like in the back of their mind, realistically, recently, like, probably not going to happen. Now, though, that there's the 12 team opportunity, like, I don't know. That would give, I feel like, motivation yeah. to get into that there's bracket. A lot more. Well, more there's motivation a lot more. to go 10 and 2. 10 and 2 merchants. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, if, if even if they go 10 and 2, they will probably be like, like this is the one that could have been this year. They would have been the 10 seed. So, yeah. like, that's not but bad. But just get yeah. in. Just so, sneak in. That's exactly. all you need that's is a really chance what they to sneak need. in. If you got a ticket to the dance, you can always. Yeah. That's there's exactly, always yeah. a chance. Like, look at, like, other teams. Like, I mean, you look sports. at March Madness, right? Yeah. Same sort of situation. There's so many, like, teams that are, like, no one's heard of them. Like, they just come out yeah. of nowhere and they just go on a big run. Like so. the Florida Panthers a couple years ago. Yeah, and, like, St. Petersburg and out uh, yeah. of New Jersey. Yeah. Yep. They just came in. But, okay, we cannot compare this to, like, next year because there's more teams in the Big Ten. I mean, Wash uh, Penn State's playing against Washington, Ohio State. I'm just guessing the USC and UCLA are also going to be. They are on there. They're so on there. those are my four losses, if you guys wanted to know. I fully believe that Penn State. I'm going to say this now, and I've been thinking about this joke the whole time. That's why I'm looking at the camera. I'm looking at the camera a lot high. So <laughs> we are bad at football. It's just, it's just how it is. I'm going to say that slogan all the time. We are bad at football. I don't. I disagree. You see that we are. I, 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 I mean, what I'll say here is like, Penn State for them to make the college football playoff, it comes down to Drew Aller. It comes mm. down to him, plain and simple. If Drew Aller mm. plays with Julian Fleming and Keandre Lambert Smith, like, and mean. treat them like number one receivers, and they get a thousand yard seasons, let's like, let's just say that yeah. they could have one of the best offenses in the Big Ten. Plus, their defense, they didn't lose that much. No. They still Bowen. have we, a we lot of defensive stars. Yeah, our, our defense our defense was probably the best in football. Yeah, and you're, you're retaining Abdul Carter yeah. and most of your defensive Penn, line. Penn so, I mean, that's yeah. really good. I think the trickiest thing with Penn State is going to be the coaching situ like the coaching situation. Yeah. I think James Franklin's, like, you know. That mix the up. The coordinators, I too. Yeah. I honestly wouldn't put the doubt on the players for not entering the college football playoff as I would for the coaching staff yeah. and what's going on there. So that's why I'm, I'm not gonna count. I'm not gonna count them out yet. I know it's so early, and like, so you can either count them out or you can count them in. But uh, maybe I'm just a hopeful Penn State fan. But yes, I mean, but the part of Manny Diaz, obviously, the defense probably won't be as good. It might not be. Yeah, but, but you brought in a former head coach, Tom Allen, yeah. who was the head coach in Indiana, and exactly. now he's coming to Penn State. He brings that defensive mentality. So technically, you have two head coaches. And you don't just have yeah. Franklin. You have technically and like, and, Tom and like Allen. You said, and like you said. 
Like Keandre Lambert Smith, obviously. Oh, yeah. He's huge. solid. He has to be huge. This I year. feel like the skill position, like obviously our tight ends are great. Um, but with with hold on. I'm thinking. The yeah, back. With, with the running backs are good, yeah. yeah. And then obviously the Keandre Lambert Smith, he, he was he was the number one receiver, but he wasn't like, you know, all that. He wasn't a world but leader. We, yeah. we needed we needed more we needed more at that skill position, especially for Drew Aller. Drew Aller obviously like he needs to step it up. Like he, he's everyone's like has, has all has all his weight on his shoulders. He needs to really he really needs to go in in and out each and every Saturday and just prove all those haters wrong. I think mm. and I think he can. I I think he can because last season I honestly think that he he was babied a little bit. Yeah, and yeah he was most of the year. Yeah. He was babied and if he is the true football player that he should be and that everyone glorifies him to be, then he can flip the switch in this off season and be that star quarterback that we've actually been praising him to be. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. and that's all, and that isn't all it takes, obviously, to well, get yeah, to the college football playoffs, but it takes, it's a huge part of it. Yeah, you need the quarterback. quarterback to get there, so we'll see how it goes down the line. Let's get to our next segment here for college football. The EA Sports College Football 25 is coming out this summer. It's on the way, and each player in college football, in Division I uh, Power 5 football, that opts in gets $600 in NIL money, and then gets a free copy of the game. So what do you guys think of that, and what do you think of the NIL Can I situation? register? Like, yeah, I, I don't understand. Literally. Literally. I, a, I need $600, yeah. because that, like, I just, it's insane to me that you could pay $600 just to have your player. Yeah, that is. Like, just not doing anything. And not even like, it's like you're getting <laughs> You don't do anything. And it's not even like you're getting recruited to be in the game. You just register. Like a, yeah. like a Google form. Like you yep. just say, like, <laughs> oh yeah, like I want to be in the game and you're going to get paid $600. The yeah. player, that's it, bizarre to me. It's 85 per team. So that's like the standard for 85 per team. So you already know like 85 players are obviously going to go on and just hit yes probably. This I is mean, going to make EA Sports like one of the biggest, I think like. And they already were big. No, and I'm they just, played. You have no <laughs> idea how excited I am for this game to come out. I've been waiting so long. I used to always go over <laughs> to my friend's house and play this in like 2014. And then ever since then, I'm like, I'm like, I have not. Like, I, I I need this game to come out as soon as possible. I might play. You know what? I might get on. Yeah, this is the first. Th this is the first. This is the first thing I'm doing. The moment this game comes out, like at midnight, I'm I'm buying it. Yeah. I know. I saw the trailer and I thought it was really good. Yeah. I thought it was really really good. When I saw like the mascots and stuff, like running out, or just like little images of it, yeah. I thought it was. I'm already gonna pre-order the game. Yeah. Once like. Yeah, that was. It's gonna be awesome, an awesome game when it comes out. So let's go to our. 360 sports moments of the day here. Our first one here, the CHA, which is the women's hockey semi semifinals are this weekend, and Penn State women's hockey will be playing RIT in a three-game series starting at 2 p.m. tomorrow here at University Park. So what are you guys' yeah. quick thoughts on that? You know, I love women's hockey. I've actually, like, over, like, this year, I've started to like it more. Uh, Penn State is currently number one, and they're currently facing RIT, which is number four. They did play last weekend, so they beat them for both days, so I think they'll be able to do it again, but the previous matchup of them was, like, a split one and one so, like, it could be either or, but I think Penn State will take it. And um, Robert Morris is pretty, pretty good, and Mercy Hurst is pretty good, so that's, I think that's going to be a very even matchup. Sophia? Yeah, I agree. I'm all for the Penn State women's hockey team. I haven't been following as much because I'm not a big hockey fan in general. But mm -hmm. I, I think that um, Penn State winning this tournament and bring home the the sorry bring home the award will be a big face for women's hockey everywhere. And I think if Penn State could start talking about it and get it, getting excited about it, then other Big Ten schools and other smaller schools which could get excited about it, and it could. Be like women's bat, how women, women's basketball has been this past season. So, yeah, I'm excited yeah. for it. I think we awesome. can take it home. I'm like you. I'm not a huge hockey fan, but yeah, I I, would, I could definitely see like this team going pretty far. I know Tessa Janicki's like she is one, one away from getting a hundred yeah. uh, goals in her career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so let's move to our final segment here. Austin Matthews has been killing it this season. 51 goals in 54 games this season. He's he could have 60 goals in 60 games. Quick thoughts on that. Anyone have anything to say? I think he's the reason that the Maple Leafs are doing so good and that the reason that they are ranked so high right now because they weren't in the beginning yeah. of the season. I think it's just ridiculous. Like, uh, you, you, know, you, never, yeah. you haven't seen this since Absolutely. Lemieux. I mean, he's, he's the favorite to win the Rocket Richard Trophy yeah. this year. He's, he's been unstoppable. So he could get to 70 goals. I don't know. But, I mean, that's the end of our show today, guys. I mean, it was a great show. A lot of sports to talk about today. Thank you for tuning in. And tune in next week for our uh, first show, which will be starting on Monday. And thank you for watching.